It's really the memories. And when I look at it, like like the Damn It Roach, like oh, a memory yeah. immediately pops up. It's it's great. And like all these people that I've met over the years and I've become friends with and just a shared camaraderie, it's it's amazing. Like PAX is just amazing for that. This is a Pinny Arcade pin. My first Pinny Arcade pin, actually. I got this while we are at PAX East a few weeks ago for playing a game called Scave, a upcoming retro FPS. Before I went to PAX, I wouldn't have thought twice about this little thing, but now I understand the allure behind these collectible pin badges. You see, Pinny Arcade is more than just a simple piece of merch. It's a community of people brought together by a mutual love of something that means more to them than its simple monetary worth. We were lucky enough, while we were at PAX East back in April, to have a chat with a couple of collectors during a trading event. We talked about their collections, what compelled them to start collecting Pinny Arcade in the first place, and most importantly, what these little pins mean to them. But first, a little bit of context. Pinny Arcade officially launched in 2013 to coincide with that year's PAX East. The pins were initially inspired by Disney pins, which I'd never heard of until I was recording this video. Disney pins are collectibles depicting usually a character from one of Disney's many franchises that fans can acquire during their time at a Disney park. You can get pins either by purchasing them from an official vendor or by talking to a cast member who will give you one for free. Pinny Arcade was created to basically offer the same experience at PAX. Fans can purchase starter sets from an official PAX merch booth, and in some instances, get pins for free by playing games at various different booths at the convention. Although the majority of Pinny Arcade's first batch depicted characters from the Penny Arcade webcomic, pins given away at booths were based on games, such as Ubisoft's Rayman Legends, or the sadly forgotten MMO Wildstar. The pins were a huge success and have become a prominent part of PAX in the nine years since their original launch. Alongside these starter kits and pins made for specific games, exclusive pins are also made for Enforcers, the battalion of fans who help run PAX every year. This was my first PAX, and one of the things I noticed while wandering around the show floor is that a lot of people had their favourite pins on their lanyards. Not only is this a great way of showing off your, you know, rarest pins, it's also a way of indicating to other people that you want to trade. There were multiple official ways to trade during this year's PAX East. There was a pin wall where you could exchange one of your pins for another pin that someone had left behind. There was like a roulette wheel which was really fun. You could offer up a couple of your pins for a chance to win some really rare ones. And there was also an official trading event, which Catherine and myself attended. We chatted to six collectors and we learned so much about Pinny Arcade, the product, as well as the community that has been formed around this collectible. start kind of collecting the pins? Oh wow, um, the year after they came out actually. I've only been collecting pins for about a year or two, probably for around four years, but I've only been trading for about one. I have been collecting since 2018. It's been about nine years now, I suppose, uh, since uh, 2013 at uh, PAX West in Seattle. My first PAX was, I think, 2016, uh, and I started collecting the cute little cat Kemper pins and I kind of got addicted to it from there, but the community's been really great, and so your collection can grow pretty quickly. I actually attended a community panel, uh, and I, I'm like, these are my people, you know? I, I, I had a couple pins, and unfortunately I lost one because I didn't have good pin backs, and I told them, and then they helped me get a replacement pin, so they're a great group of people. I missed the early boat and, and getting in on it, and then the very next year it you know it hit me and the hobby took over and I needed a good addiction at the time, so here we are. How many pins do you kind of have all together? Um oh god. Definitely a couple hundred, mm -hmm. but I'm actually looking to reduce a little bit because I have a lot. <laughs> and my my uh, my Binder is getting a little bit too condensed. I've got probably over a thousand right now. Yeah, the you know the whole collections and the like eight or nine hundred numbers for like if you get everything. And I've got most of my collection done and 
you know, they add to it every year. But, uh, you know, inside of that, I've got a bunch of stuff to trade. Oh, my gosh. Uh, probably somewhere in, like, the 400 range. Um, my collection is, is really small compared to a lot of the people that have been doing it for years. But each of the pins becomes really personal. So it's it's a good size for probably someone who's been doing it for a little bit. Probably around 80. So that's not that huge in comparison to other people. Um, but I really love them. I trade um, and collect cute pins. So it's not really about the value as much as about the aesthetic for me. Yeah, yeah. Probably at least uh, 2,000 or so of, of Penny Arcade pins. But I also collect other pins like uh, Disney or Blizzard or some other. So it may be tens of thousands for all I know. Do you have a favorite pin? Uh, yeah, it, and I don't have it out here, unfortunately, but it's uh, it's a bird from Annapurna uh, from the Edith Finch game, and it's just it's gorgeous. Um, their artist is phenomenal, and it just kind of looks like a still life painting. That's a really good question. Uh, I think it'll probably have to be one of the Kempers here. It's just a really collectible set, and I think it's gonna have to be the one uh, where he's holding a cup of Starbucks. Um, it's just. I love coffee and yeah, yeah. cats are cute too, yeah. for sure. That is a good pin, yeah. Yeah, I really like the glittery cupcake. I do. Um, do you want me to show it? Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's yeah. great. It's actually, it's called Damn It Roach. Um, if, you, if you attended the 2018 panel, um, you got a pin and I did not know that and I got the pin and I love The Witcher. Yeah. And I think that year or sometime after someone offered me a hundred dollars for it and I said no. Um, it is my utmost favorite. For sure. In between these interviews, as I was gathering up our equipment, I was looking around the room and realized, although many pins were changing hands, there was no money in the room. No one was passing over dollar bills in exchange for pins. So I asked one of the collectors, does anyone ever buy pins with cash here? And it turns out that not only do you never buy pins with cash while it packs, it's actually considered bad etiquette to do so. This rule stems back to those Disney pins that inspired Penny Arcade in the first place. It turns out that when you're at a Disney park, you are not allowed to exchange them for cash unless you're buying them from an official vendor. Instead, you're encouraged to trade. You're encouraged to either go up to cast members or other people who are wearing pins on their lanyard and initiate a like-for-like -like trade. So the general idea is if you want to get into Pinny Arcade collecting, you go to PAX, you go to a merch booth, you buy a starter kit, and then you start to trade these pins or you get some free ones from booths and you start to build up a collection of pins that means something personally to you. Or, and this is the bit that I thought was truly sensational, a lot of the larger collectors, people who had huge collections of Pinny Arcade pins who were at that trading event, they had piles of duplicates and ones they didn't really care for anymore just to the side of their trading area and the sole purpose of that pile was just to hand out to people who wanted to get involved who wanted to be a part of this community because as we were quickly discovering the more we spoke to people within that room Pinny Arcade isn't just about the pins. So what, what is it about kind of collecting the pins that kind of means so much to you personally? Um. It's kind of the hunt, but lately uh, it's the community, I guess. Uh, you know, I go to most of the uh, uh, American uh, PAX events every year, so we've made a lot of friends in the community, and uh, you know, it's good to see everybody. Um, we keep in touch on chat online as well, so uh, you know, a lot of people I talk to all the time still. To me personally, it means making new friends. It means sharing memories of video games with other people. Uh, it means a community of folks who really just love video games and packs and acceptance. So every time I can share my collection and say to people, hey, I was there, I was at that show, or I love that game too. That's really what PAX pinning collection means to me. Um, I think the community, um, just trading with everybody. We have a Penny Pal Slack channel and just talk all the time. And I think it's just a really good place to connect with people. I also um, have volunteered with Child's Play and I like doing that aspect of like helping with the trading yeah, yeah. at the trading board there and supporting like the different charities like Cookie Brigade and stuff yeah. like that. So yeah. It's really the memories. And when I look at it, like 
like the Damn It Roach, like a memory immediately pops up. It's it's great, and like all these people that I've met over the years and become friends with, and just as shared camaraderie, it's it's amazing. Like Pax is just amazing for that. I'd be lying if I said I haven't looked on eBay as to how much this Quali pin goes for. Turns out it goes for around £48 per pin. I could go on eBay right now and sell, well, I've got two of these, I could sell both and, and make close to £100, but why would I do that? Why would I deny myself the exciting opportunity to take one or both of these pins to the next PAX event I attend, try and trade it for something that means something to me? I could get a cool collectible about a game that I really care about. Before we wrap up, I want to tell you a little bit about the first person we interviewed when we went to the trading event. Sadly, we lost the audio for this interview because uh, when you're at an event, things go wrong. But his story was so interesting, I just wanted to recount a couple of things he said to us. Their collection was so vast that they only needed two or three additional pins to complete the entire set. I think they had one of, if not the biggest collection out of everyone we spoke to in this room. However, instead of keeping these precious pins safely locked away in a case or a padded folder, their entire pin collection was attached to a long black coat. One of these pins is worth thousands of dollars, and yet there it was, adorned to the back of the coat for all to see. This coat I suppose, kind of represented what Pinny Arcade means to people. It's about wearing your achievements for all to see and surrounding yourself with people who understand that the memories these pins elicit is the most valuable thing about them. Thank you so much for watching and indeed thank you for being an RPS supporter. Your support allows us to make cool, interesting videos such as this. I really hope you enjoyed this video and make sure to stick to Rock Paper Shotgun for more RPS at PAX stuff. See you soon.